Hi guys, EBP man, what's up, what's for me? Uh, the Samsung Galaxy Note 5 was released uh, this weekend, and I thought it would be very appropriate, now that you have your hands on your Note 5, for me to create a tips and tricks video. This video is going to cover several areas. First of all, we're going to talk about customization, uh, how do you customize your experience, you know, folders, applications, uh, we'll cover all those things. We're also going to talk about configuration and things that you could do with your phone that you didn't even know you could. And then uh, we're going to go over several usability tips. So stay tuned and let's take a look at some of the tips. So the first tip is all about folders. How do you create folders? And you'll notice here that I have some personalized folders, one that reads my stuff and another one wrote browsers and Google. It's really easy to combine things, so I'm just going to show you how you do it. All you have to do is take an icon, a program, and drag it right on another program, and once you release it, it creates a folder. It's that simple. You then have the ability to name that folder, so I'm going to call this test. And you also have the ability to change the color of the folder. And once you're complete, all you do is you tap outside, and now you have a new folder. To remove a program from the folder, all you do, and what we're going to do is add one more program to the folder. And I just dragged another one. And as you open it, you see how everything is grouped together. All you do is open up the folder, grab the program that you want to remove, and then drag it outside of the folder, and then wherever you want to place it. So that's creating a folder, naming a folder, and then also taking something out of a folder. If at any time you want to change the name of the folder, all you do is tap on the title, and then you can change it, and then also you could also change the color if that's something that you'd like to do. Deleting a folder is also easy. And what you all do is just drag your folders, your uh, programs outside of the folder. And then once you've dragged it out of the folder and there aren't any programs inside, uh, it basically disappears. So it's that simple to get rid of a folder. You can also organize the bottom area here uh, simply by just grabbing the program and then dragging it wherever you want it. And you'll notice that things kind of move around. So I'll just press it here and I'll drag it over to the end. Once things move, I'll let go and you'll notice how I change the order. So I'm pressing and holding and then dragging over and then aligning it where I want it to be. I could also take something from this area, move it to the top, and take a folder that I created and then drag it to that area. So now I have all my programs listed there to make it easier for me to access. So this is a pretty flexible area. And the rules of creating and, um, and then removing folders and changing the color folders also apply to anything that's in this area. You can also customize um, your application tray. So here are all my applications. And one of the things I wanted to show you is how I've been organizing things in folders. Uh, you cannot, one of the things that you may try to do immediately is to drag, to take the program and try to drag it uh, but you'll notice as soon as I, I grab it, it basically uh, goes into the area that you have most access to. So it kind of takes you away from this application tray. So in order to create folders, all you have to do is tap the edit button. And now you'll notice that you have these minus signs. Uh, these minus signs give you the ability to uninstall an application. So this is the fastest way to uninstall an application is just by tapping that. Or what you could do in this case, since we're going to create folders, is grab the application that you want to create a folder, put it right on top of the other application, and then you can create um, a folder. And these folders live in this area here. Again, the um, if I open up the folder, I can drag something out of the folder as well. And then as I do that, the folder disappears, right? Renaming the folder is just as you would in the other, uh, the other example I gave you. So if I open up the folder, I can change the name. I can also change the color of that folder. So it's that simple to modify or create folders for your app tray. Now the order of the icons that appear in the app tray um, can be customized. So there's a couple things I just want to show here. If you choose A to Z, and let's say you have a folder, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to edit, and I'm going to take this shopping folder, and I'm going to move it over a couple screens. You know, so I'm just going to drag it over here. It's kind of hard to get it onto that other screen, but we'll drag it. So now it's over here, and you'll notice I have two folders. I have a media folder, um, and I also have this shopping folder. Uh, now that I've done that, it's going to stick. It's very sticky. So here I have all these folders grouped together, but then the folder that I just created or moved are right here. You'll notice that there's a button here that says A through Z. If you press that button, what's going to happen is all the programs that are here are going to resort. So I'm going to choose A to Z. It's going to warn me. And when it sorts, now all my major categories are grouped together. I like grouping things in categories because it's easier for me to find things. And you can name this whatever you want, but it makes it easier, especially if you're someone who adds a lot of programs and uses a lot of programs. Just so hard to get through all of them that I like uh, creating those groups. Now the number of icons that appear on the page can change um, and you could actually use this to make them larger if you like. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to 
pinch in like this. Again, all I did is I pinched in. And you'll notice there's something here that says grid size. When I choose the grid size, you'll notice today um, the grid size that I have is 5x5. Five five. If I choose 4x5, there are less programs on the page, but when I get out, I'm just going to say apply, uh, the, the icons get larger because they're occupying more space. I'm going to do this again. I choose the screen grid, and I could do 4x4. Four four. And what will happen is, again, they're, they're going to occupy more space, but they're also going to get larger. So if you, if you find that the icons are too small, you could use this technique just to um, get more icons on the actual page. Now looking at this at your screen, you'll notice that if you swipe over to the right, you get into this briefing area. Um, some folks don't like it and like turning it off. I'm one of them. This is how you turn that off. All you do is you you do the pinch and you swipe over and you'll notice that there's a checkbox there. Just by tapping that check and then basically coming back, uh, when you swipe over, you'll notice there's nothing there. Now what you can do is you can reorganize your pages. So the briefing is gone, so if I pinch in again, I can then take one of these pages that are right here and I can move it this way. All right? And now, uh, why, why I do that is because I like being able to swipe to the left or swiping to the right to get access to programs. But now that briefing center is gone and it's not going to be in the way unless you want it there. Now another neat program that I use often is the magnifier. Now this is a magnifier that you don't really have to install um, into um, install. Now one of the programs that I use quite often is a program called Magnifier. And this isn't an app that you have to install. It's actually um, part of the Samsung um, experience. Uh, so what you do is once you install it, what you'll be able to do is use this as a magnifying glass to zoom into text. Uh, you could actually use this light to actually light up what you're going to be reading to. Focusing, it's literally the camera, but it's more aligned with being able to read small print. Um, use this often to look at serial numbers and things of that nature. So it's something that um, I always um, showcase uh, when I'm talking to folks about this feature. So this is what you do to get it. All you do is you press and hold on the screen, and this time we're going to go into widgets. Now, there are a lot of different widgets, um, and the widgets are going to grow based on the applications that you install. So the more applications you install, many of those applications come with widgets. So all I'm doing is just swiping around, looking at the widgets that are there, and what you'll notice is that each one is grouped into kind of like a, uh, a grouping or a category based on the application itself. Notice how magnifier is here by itself. If I press and hold on it, and drag it and place it on the page. Uh, now I have my magnifier. So the magnifier is going to again allow you to zoom in and really get close to that text that you need to have uh, or, or you're having difficulty reading. Here's an example of how you can use the magnifier. I'm just going to take open up the magnifier and I'm going to put this box here um, and I'm just going to tap on it. And you'll notice how this uh, came into focus, large print. And what I could do is I could even make it larger if I wanted to. focus it even more and or I could just press the plus and see how big this gets I could also use the flashlight to just lighten it up if that's necessary and uh, what I could also do is you know take a picture of it if I needed to so this is how you would use the magnifier and why I recommend uh, just knowing how to set it up if you use your phone as a hot spot and find that it doesn't perform as well uh, like when you're using the phone, in other words, your phone can get to the internet really fast, but anything connected to it is going slow. It could be a matter of you're on the wrong uh, Wi-Fi channel. And if you're in an area where there's a lot of hot spots or there's a lot of um, uh, signal noise, you may find that the quality of the calls um, or your Wi-Fi is not high. I want to show you a little tip here. So if we're going to go into um, Edit... Actually, we're going to go into our little lock here. And what we're going to do is you're going to use a search command to find your hotspot. So I'm going to type, type in the word mobile hotspot and tethering. I'm going to choose this. And then we're going to go into configuration. Next, we'll choose mobile hotspot. We'll go into more and choose configure mobile hotspot. You're going to swipe up. So you'll swipe up and then you choose show advanced options. And then what you do is you'll swipe up again. Now, this is the area that I wanted to show you. Uh, most people, most places you're in, the airport, um, any kind of cafe, um, homes, um, at the park, everyone is using 2.4 gigahertz. So um, to get the best signal, switch to 5 gigahertz. It's a, a frequency that is not often used, and it's something that more advanced phones have, like the S6 
and also the Note 5. So once you choose it, what you'll find is you can also modify the channel like you can on the hotspot or any hotspot or access point, but you'll, you should find that your speed will improve on any devices connected to the phone because there's less interference. Fingerprint recognition has been greatly improved with the Note 5. Let me show you how quickly I can log into the phone. Notice that? All it was literally was just a tap. Now, in order to get that efficiency, you have to program your finger or register your finger uh, the correct way. So I'm going to give you some tips on how you can get the best fingerprint recognition possible, and it's really easy. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to come up to the top single finger and a tap on the wheel or that little uh, cog. I'm going to choose search, and what I'm going to do is type in fingerprints. I already have it there, but all you'll do is type in fingerprints. Once you've done it, you're going to come into this fingerprint area. And it's going to ask you for a fingerprint if one has been registered, or if it hasn't, it'll just take you to the process. What I'm going to do is add a fingerprint. I'm going to show you the technique that I use to add a fingerprint that I get the most recognition. So what you're going to do is you're, take, you're going to take your thumb, and you're going to just tap it. And it's going to tell you once it's gotten it. Now, most people continue to tap the same way. What I like doing is changing my position. I like going upside down. I like going in every direction possible. I like just putting the tip of my thumb. Um, sometimes when I'm holding my phone like this, I may tap it like this. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to tap in a couple places because I just don't know how I'm going to grab it. I'm also going to do an angle. And I'm also going to do another angle, but this way. And you notice how I'm changing. I'm, very, I'm just changing the way I'm registering my finger every single time because I want the system to pick up every possible way that I may be registering or, or wanting to open my phone. And by doing this, I'm giving more impressions or more samples for the phone. Now it has recognized 100% of um, those samples. What I can also do here is by tapping on fingerprint, I can rename this. So I'm going to call this that this is my thumb, just so that I know, and this is going to be my left thumb. And I like naming uh, my fingerprint because if I have trouble with um, it recognizing and I need to do it again, I know which one I could delete and I can uh, re-register if that's necessary. Now before we actually test it out, the other thing I wanted to highlight is that you could use your fingerprint uh, to unlock websites so it will remember passwords um, and you can also use it to verify your Samsung account for purchases. There will be more applications I'm sure that will be out there uh, that will allow you to do more uh, type of uh, this type of recognition. So now let's test how well my registration went. I'm going to turn on the phone and I'm just going to use my thumb. See how quick that was? And that was all because I just changed the motion or the different angles that I registered my fingerprint. Now this next tip is about Chrome. So um, one of the things that changed with the new Chrome is when you open up a new tab, all of your uh, tabs show up in your recent applications. And some people don't like that. I'm, I'm one of them. This is how you turn that off. So all you do is you go into Settings. You then go into Merge Tabs and Apps. Make it off or select it so it's off. And then what you'll be able to do is by clicking on that number, it shows you how many tabs you have open. So that's a quick way to get those that function back. Now, here's another tip. If you put your finger on the title and swipe down, you could actually get, go to any one of the pages uh, or tabs that you have open. So now what I can do is go back to the Samsung page, and you saw how easy that was. I didn't have to choose this. All I had to do is swipe down. And again, all you have to do is do the same thing, to swipe down, and then you can go back to the page that you're on. Now another uh, area that you can modify and change uh, for with your with your phone, and this is going to change your experience somewhat, is the use of themes. And themes were actually, um, in, um, I would say, introduced with the Samsung Galaxy S6. So I'm going to choose uh, themes, and themes are different than wallpapers. Wallpapers just change the color of the background, as you see I have there, but themes change your full experience. So with a theme, for example, you could actually change, and we'll tap this theme here, um, you could actually change the way the phone looks. So this has kind of like, you know, almost like a Space Invaders type look, and this is what your experience is going to be. Your phone is going to change. Your context is going to change. Um, so you can change even how your, your chats or your text messages are going to look. So this is a, an area 
that you can personalize without having to add any third-party software. There's also a theme store, and the theme store is going to give you the ability to um, also select other themes. One of the things I like doing is if I choose a theme, you know, my phone may look a little boring, but I choose themes that are going to optimize my battery experience. So I try to look at themes that are you know, focused on the blacks. So for example, this wouldn't be a bad theme. Um, and don't really have a lot going on. I'd probably go one with one that's a little bit uh, darker than this. But here's another example of a theme that you can choose. And again, this is going to change your experience, your phone dialer, your text messaging. It's going to change uh, the chats, your contacts, as you can see there, um, how everything looks. So this is a nice way if you want to dress up your phone, change the way your phone um, you know, looks, the experience, you can go ahead and do that and just explain Experience all the different type of themes that are available. Uh, all you have to do is once you find a theme that you like, you select it. So we'll choose, let's say, for example, we'll go with this uh, one of these dark themes. Let's see if I see anything else that's uh, that's a little darker. Yeah, we'll choose this guy right here. Uh, once you choose, you see the theme that you like, and you review it just as we are, just like that, and saying, yeah, you know, this one is the one that I like. All you do is download, and then once you download it, it's going to appear with these other themes. They appear, uh, they appear right here. It'll be downloaded, and then all you have to do is choose Apply. Now, most of us use our phone at times as a flashlight, and you may be tempted to install a third-party app, and you may you know, want to use your two-finger swipe down, as we've done with some of the other devices, and you'll notice that it doesn't work, and you're wondering, hey, where did the flashlight go? I can't find it. Well, if you choose Edit, You'll notice that your flashlight is there. Now, this area that you see here, these are the, this is the these are the, the the shortcuts, the toggles that are available from swiping left to right. Right, so there's limited now that will appear. So if you tap the flashlight, it's going to turn on the, the flashlight. So you have your flashlight there, but I may not want it hidden over there. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to press and hold, and I'm going to drag it to the top. And now it's going to appear there. Maybe I I, I even want it since I use it so often. I'm going to say I want it right here, right next to my Wi-Fi. I could also say that I want to have my private mode um, right there as well. So I have private, and yeah, that seems like what I'd want. Maybe I even can modify this one more time and say um, I'd rather have things organized like this. So what I'm doing is personalizing um, that area of the screen. Now when I hit Done, and I, I go back now, You'll notice that my flashlight is there, and as I move over, those applications that I organize in that specific order are now permanently there, and now I can access my flashlight easily. Now, the next feature I want to show you is one that really focuses on privacy. Uh, this is how you can put content in a secure area that's encrypted, and it won't be able to be accessed by anyone unless they have the code or the fingerprint to access it. So you'll notice that there is a function here that talks about privacy, but what we're going to do is we're going to go into settings, and I want to show you a little bit more. I'm going to go into my search, and I'm going to try type the word private. And you'll notice how it's already there since I did a previous search. I'm going to choose uh, private mode. And we're going to talk about what this function does. So what you can do is this is the entire area. You can pr uh, put privacy. In other words, no one's going to be able to see it. It's going to be hidden until you turn off private mode. So when it says private mode off, it's kind of misleading. Private mo mode off means that the content that you have made private can't be seen. When I turn private mode on, anything that was hidden becomes visible. Okay, those are the two functions. And the private mode access type, you notice it says it's fingerprints because that's how I've locked down. It could be a, uh, your password that you use uh, for your phone. But what you can do is you can make private your gallery, your video, your music, voice recorders, files, um, internet history, and also your S notes so that no one can see them. Uh, great way to have some privacy, especially if you have your kids messing with your phone and you don't want anything to be damaged, deleted by mistake. Um, I use private mode and I recommend that you do too. Now, accessing your camera is faster than ever before. Uh, this was introduced with the S6. Um, all you have to do is double tap your home button, and you get into the camera mode. It's that fast and that easy. So let's take a look at the camera now. Um, most people don't really explore all the different features the camera has. So what I wanted to do is show you some of the new features that are there and also features that you may want to take advantage of. So auto is pretty straightforward. That means that the phone is going to determine brightness if it needs a flash, what the ISO level should be. There's all these different settings that for some may be very complicated, but for others they may be very passionate about and want to control. And if you're one of those passionate people, very um, 
expert when it comes to all these settings, you can actually go into Pro Mode. And Pro Mode is going to give you the ability to determine how your focus is going to be, your ISO settings, um, and uh, also your white balance. You're going to be able to determine, you know, the the uh, macro level that's going on. Um, also apply some filters. Uh, really have control of every aspect of your phone. And if you're someone who's into that, um, this is going to make a lot of sense for you. Uh, you could use panorama, and that panorama panorama mode is really neat because it allows you to get a large um, or wide view. I uh, used the panorama mode when I was in the Grand Canyon, and it was great to be able to take a picture from left to right and really make it um, uh, the experience, what I was seeing visually, to share it with family and friends. So panorama mode just takes it. It's also a great picture if you have a large family photo and you want to be able to take everybody and not be limited by what you can see because literally all you do is you move your phone to the left and to the right to capture everybody. Now the video collage is new and the video collage is going to give you the ability to snap you know, four videos and all the videos are going to be like cubes and they're going to be moving uh, so each one moving on its own. Now live broadcast, that's for someone who is um, who likes, who wants to be able to stream one going on onto YouTube um, and I don't see many people using that unless you're a YouTube influencer or someone who publishes a lot of content on YouTube. Slow motion is great too because slow motion if you have um, uh, a car, your son, your daughter, a relative of yours, your significant other running or passing by and you want to get a slow motion shot, you could do that and the same thing with fast motion. And then you have also the virtual shot which is really going to give you the ability to take the picture all the way around. But there's more uh, features and many people miss this uh, area. So what you could do is you can actually get a sports shot, a surround shot, you have sound shot, so this is going to capture audio at the same time. A food shot, which is going to enhance the colors of the food. Dual camera, so that you're going to be able to be in the picture as you're taking the picture. Uh, and, and again, you could just uh, experiment with all these. You also have the rear selfie. So these are all modes that don't come pre-installed, but you can install yourself to make the maximum of your experience while using your phone. Now the last thing, we're going to go back into auto, I want to show you is the effects area. Um, actually, there's a couple more things before we do that. So with the effects, what you can do is see in real time. So if I put my finger here, you'll notice that it's showing my finger, and it's showing what the effect is for each one of the filters. It's going to show you the filter and the effect on screen, so you can choose the kind of look that you want. Now, one thing that's missing, and I highlighted this in my... Um, both my mini review and my longer review is that there's no grayscale, no black and white. And there aren't any. Um, even if you go into this area to download more, and this is going to take you to the store, there aren't any filters. If I look at the Samsung filters, at least uh, this week, there's no uh, called grayscale or black and white. But there are several filters here that you can look at, both free and those that you paid for, but still I haven't seen any that support the black and white uh, function. Now the other thing that we have, and that will just make sure that it's in focus right there, is you have the ability also up here at the very top to put in video stabilization, which is something that I enable. I like using grid lines because most people take pictures of the subject in the middle. And with grid lines, it really gives your pictures a different perspective when you start using corners and things like that. So when I exit out of this, you notice that these light lines are there. And what you could do is you can take a picture of a person over here and take everything else or just you know experiment with that. There's a lot of um, articles on the Internet that talk about that. You can enable to review the picture. You can turn on location tags. Um, and also you can... Uh, you know, enable or disable that quick launch that you can get by pressing the center button, uh, the home button twice. Also enabling raw files, which gives you the ultimate ability to modify and manipulate uh, the actual photo because it's kind of like unprocessed. Um, you know, avid photographers like raw files. And then you have voice controls um, that gives you the ability to, um, you know, use, let's say, like the word, say, cheese to be able to... Um, make the camera take a picture, which is great if you um, have it on a monopod or a tripod and you want the, uh, to, instead of using a timer, you can just say cheese and it'll take the picture. Um, you can enable or disable the shutter sound. That's annoying to some people. Um, or you can reset the settings. So a lot of stuff here. And one of the things that we failed to mention is all the video quality effects. And the neat thing about it is depending on which one you choose, it's going to tell you as you choose which one, which, uh, what you lose, um, which format support specific um, you know uh, features so like uh, video effects video stabilization so that you need to be in FHD or something higher but you could go all the way up to uh, ultra high definition and if you have an ultra high definition TV it's really going to take advantage of this as well uh, you do have the ability here to also 
change um, the resolution of your photos. I like taking the highest resolution possible, but if you do have um, a small amount of memory, you may choose to um, reduce this just to uh, benefit from the actual space that you're able to save. And then the last thing uh, that we have here is your timer. Your, you have also the ability to turn on and off flash and set an auto and the HDR effect. Uh, again, and you have the ability to hide these things if you like, as well as reorder them. The Note also has the ability to do multitasking, and there are a couple of ways you can do it. I'm going to show you one of them. So all you do is, if you were to press and hold uh, the multitasking button, you'll have a split screen window. And you can choose what you want to see on the top and what you want to see on the bottom based on the applications that you have here. So for example, you may want to be in Facebook at the same time that you're on Amazon, or you may want to be in Facebook at the same time that you're browsing the internet. So what I can do, for example, is I'm going to choose that I'd like to have the Galaxy Store open on top. And then what I can say is, all right, what do I want to see on the bottom? I may be able to choose, let's see what I'll put up there. Um, let's see, let's go ahead and choose, we'll just do something simple. We'll choose Amazon. So what you're seeing is at the very top, I have one application, another one going simultaneously. This is great also like if you're browsing and trying to do some price comparison. So you have something happening here and something happening on the bottom. Now there's a lot of things that you could do. You could also minimize things. You could actually open multiple applications at the same time. I have lots of videos on how you do that. Not much has changed in that area. You could actually minimize something and make something even smaller or you can switch um, how things are organized. So uh, what I just did there is I switched them so that they uh, rotated. Uh, I can make things small. So um, what I've done now is I've collapsed uh, that other uh, application. And you'll, what you'll notice is that here I have Amazon is right now on the screen. So if I press home, you'll notice I have it here as a little floating uh, program. If I tap on it, it opens up. And I can actually have it as, a, as, a, as just a small window. This is very similar um, to um, using Windows, right? So you can actually move things around. And I can have multiple applications that are just floating like this. I can then maximize it, or I can hit the X to close it. Now, the S Pen is, is another uh, neat feature, and if you've purchased the Note 5 for the S Pen features, it also has been improved. So we're going to choose S Pen. And one of the things that I find most useful now of the S Pen is really the ability to write on the screen with the, with the actual phone off. So you'll notice over here there's several things that you can do. You can hover the pen over something, and it, a pointer will appear, and showing you know what are the things that you can do, like shortcuts. But I like Screen Memo, so you're going to want to make sure that Screen Memo is on. You also have pen alerts, um, and also you also have the uh, pen detection. I like keeping pen detection on so that in the event that I walk away and I leave my stylus, the phone will tell you. You have pen sounds and also pen vibration. So uh, this is how the uh, writing on the screen when it's off works. So we're going to get out of this. I'll turn it off, and I'm going to push um, on the stylus so that it pops out, the little head pops out. Let's do that again. There it goes. And now as soon as I take it out, you'll notice how that little swirl took place right there. And very lightly, the screen is now enabled. So I can actually write on the screen. I can write a note really quick. And once I write this note, um, it will save it for later. Okay, And I don't have to do anything. All I have to do at this point is just put it back in the sleeve. And just by putting back in its sleeve, it's been saved. So where did it save? Let's see. So once you go into your um, S notes, you'll notice that your note is there just waiting for you. So it's a great way to use the stylus, save a note um, when you actually need it without actually having to go through a lot of steps. Now some of you may feel that the Note 5 is too big uh, for your hand. And one of the things that you could do is uh, really like or adjust the phone so that you can use it with one hand. Let me show you a feature. I'm going to triple uh, tap the home button. Let's do that again. All right. So um, notice what happened. I did a uh, triple tap, and now the screen is much smaller. And if you notice, I can actually cover the entire screen with my hand. This is um, called the one hand function. And this one hand function not only does it adjust the screen so that it's smaller, but all your functions also get shifted. So you notice uh, your the ability for you to type on the actual numbers here that you see for your keypad also get reduced. Let me show you how you set up this one-handed function. 
So go into device settings, you'll choose display, then you'll choose one-handed operation, and you'll enable these two options, reduce screen size and one-handed input. You can improve the sound quality through your headset as well as it could be wired or Bluetooth by just going through a couple steps. So we're going to go into sounds and notifications and what we're going to do is sound quality and effects. Now within sound quality and effects what you can do is actually choose uh, to use a um, UHQ upscaler which is going to enhance the overall quality, uh, the depth of the sound. You could choose sound alive and you could use uh, Tube Amp Pro. And the Tube Amp is going to give those people who have experience listening to music on a tube amplifier uh, the experience, uh, the hum, the you know, there's a little uh, noise in the background that makes it simulate what it would be like to be uh, listening to music through a Tube Amp. And you can enable all these or just the ones that you'd like. Now, in order for that to be enabled, you have to do two things. Uh, first, you'll need to make sure that you go through the adapt the sound for you type settings. Now, I've gone through this, and what it will do is it will adjust the sound to uh, your hearing ability. So you'll want to go through this, and you'll need to plug in your headphones, either Bluetooth or wired, and then go through a test. And it's very similar to the hearing test that you uh, have when you go to the doctor. So you're going to hear tones in your left ear, your right ear, and you can see here I see my left, um, the right. And these lines, what it's doing is it's adjusting the your hearing ability, because all of us hear differently. The younger that you are, the more you can hear those really uh, light tones, and the older you are, the um, the less likely you are. Um, also, there, are, depending on how much music and how loud the music has been in your life, uh, you may have some uh, hearing loss that you may not realize. Uh, so this is going to bring all that out for you. And you, what you'll be able to do is listen to before and after um, capabilities as far as you know what's the difference uh, of what you hear. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the phone. I'm going to plug in a headset onto the bottom. And then what we're going to do is I'm just going to show you what happens. So now when we go back, now that the phone detects that there is a headset connected, you'll notice that these things are enabled. Again, you have to go through this first. But here you can notice you can enhance the sound. And I'll tell you, listening to music before and after, it is worth your time. It just takes a couple minutes to do the, uh, the sound uh, quality adjustment. And most uh, you know, users that I speak to don't go through this step. And then they're just like amazed at how good things sound. So you do this, you can use this, or you can use this one. And again, um, it will be available via Bluetooth or on a corded um, headset. Now this next feature really comes into play for those of you who have eliminated uh, that landline or the phone in your house. And most of us do. Like I don't really have a, a landline. I have my cell phones. So I could receive calls from all sorts of people at all times. And it's really annoying that when you're in bed and you get a telemarketer call or you get someone who's calling you when you're trying to sleep. So what most of us do is we turn off our phones or we reduce the volume. The problem with that is that if someone needs to get in contact with you, a family member, your mom, your dad, your, if you have any children, um, they can't reach you. So this new feature, or it's an existing feature that not many people take advantage of is called do not disturb and what I like about this feature is that if you turn this on what you could do is set a schedule um, during the week at to what times you will not be taking calls and you don't have to reduce the volume you don't have to do anything of that sort so you choose the days that you'd like to have the schedule on and then you put your start time so you set your start time so I'm saying at 10 p.m. I don't want to be I don't want to get any calls to 7 a.m. the next day. Now you can modify this. You can make it, you know, to 5 o'clock in the morning to whatever time you know, you, uh, you want to be uh, uninter uninterrupted. You don't want to be interrupted by any way. Uh, you can also then uh, allow exceptions. And what I like about the exceptions is that you can say the alarm, because most of us use our phones as an alarm. You want the phone to to make noise. You can say I want to receive calls, and you can choose who you'll receive a call from. So if you have an elderly parent, you can actually choose calls from and you can put your mom, your dad there and it will bypass that setting. You could also set it up for messages. So, or calls and messages combine from uh, specific people. So this is a great way to control incoming messages, especially when you want to rest, sleep, or even if you're on the job and they have strict rules about incoming calls and calls, you could actually set this up during your work schedule and then only be bothered from people that you should be. One thing I get a lot of emails on is how do you find your phone if it's lost? Now, 
uh, it's kind of hard to if you prepare yourself to find your phone once it's already lost. So you need to do some prep first. What you want to do is go into your locks and security area, and you'll want to choose Find My Mobile. Now, Find My Mobile is very similar to that which you, uh, you see on the Apple uh, iPhones, where if you register or enable this function, you could go into Samsung's website, and you can actually track your phone. It will show you where it last was. And if it's moving, you'll be able to uh, track it as well. You can do remote wiping. You can do locking. There's a whole bunch of things that you can do. So what you'll want to do is you'll want to go into this area, put in your email, register, and then you'll be able to track your phone in the event that it gets lost. Now this feature is another feature that I use quite often. The lock and security feature has something called secure lock settings. And the secure lock settings has two options. Uh, one um, is, you know, how long does it take to lock the screen, which is really not really that exciting, but it's functional. But this one is the one that I really like, the smart lock. So I'm going to go ahead and use my fingerprint to go into the smart lock area. And what smart lock is all about is choosing if you have a specific device, for example, you're running with your phone, you have it in one of those armbands, and I'm wearing a specific headset. That's what that SH-07 is. That's a headset. I'm running with my headset, and I want to be able to access my phone without requiring a fingerprint or a number lock. So it establishes trust between this device, the headset, and your phone, and says, if this device is connected to your, to your phone, don't lock the phone. And that makes it so much easier, especially if you have one of those armbands, to access the, your phone without having to unlock it. This is also extremely useful uh, when I'm in my car, and if this phone is paired to my car, I can also then say, if this is connected to my car, which means I'm in my car, I don't want my phone locked. And it would also make it easier for me to access my phone when I need to. So the trusted devices make sure that the phone isn't locked uh, when any of these devices are connected. So this is something you should really try. Trusted place has to do with location. So it's going to look at your GPS coordinates. So you could say that if I am at home, I don't want my phone to lock. And once I leave my home, the phone will lock. You could use also um, trusted voice. You can use your voice for some of those features. And then you have this one down here, which is the uh, the, the body detection. So if it's on your body, it will basically um, stay unlocked. So if it's in your hand, it's unlocked. Or if it's in your pocket, um, it will be unlocked. But if you leave it on your desk, it's going to be in locked mode. Uh, this one I don't really use that much, but it's definitely an option that you can take a look at. It. So this feature that I'm about to show you allows you to secure your phone so that if you borrow your phone to someone to look at, let's say, the Internet or to look at Facebook or to even look at Flipboard, you can control and make sure that they don't go anywhere else. Uh, this also would work if you um, have a child, and I see many times as you're in the grocery store, you see the parent gives their phone to their child so that they stay entertained while they're doing groceries. The problem is, is that the child can go anywhere on the phone, make phone calls, um, can also just cause havoc, or your friend can become a snoop and start looking um, at what's going on on your phone. So one of the things that you need to do is go into lock screen and security, and then go other security settings. And under security settings, if you go down to the bottom, you have this uh, pin window. Now, what pin does is it forces the a screen to stay and it will not change unless you use your password to um, unlock it. So let me show you how that works. So I'm going to um, get out of the screen. We'll go all the way out and I'm going to bring in my multitasking window. We're going to get rid of this. Now you see here how there's a little pin there. So uh, if uh, I were to choose Flipboard right and not use the pin what will happen is if I borrow this to someone say, hey, check, a lot, check out this article, they're going to then easily press this and they can start snooping. If I go in here and I choose pin it, it's going to tell me, it's going to warn me that the only way I can get out of the screen is by pressing these two buttons at the same time and then using my, uh, my password. So now it's been pinned. Now if I press the home button, it won't move. If I press the back button, it won't move. If I press the multitasking button, it won't move. But this person can go through all these articles without any problem, but they can't get out of it. Now, when I get the phone back, and let's say they know this command, it's going to lock your phone. So if you want to be able to get in, you need your fingerprint. And now that I've chosen my fingerprint, if I press home, I can go to the main page and access my phone. So let's say you want to be able to print from your phone. This is what you're going to need to do. You're going to go into um, Connections and more connections, and then you'll choose print. Under this area, you'll notice that Samsung's included uh, the Samsung uh, print service plugin, but you need to add an HP, an Epson, or Canon, or any other brand printer. Uh, in order to do that, you choose download plugin, 
and once you choose download plugin you're going to choose from all the different uh, plugins that are available so this is where you'll be able to print from let's say a, a Lexmark um, you can choose a brother printer Canon um, you'll notice Epson is here so this is going to open up your ability to print from your phone but it's something that many people don't know exists or know how to set up so this is how you print now this tip relates to messaging and it's one of my favorite tips in the messaging area. If you have to send a text message to um, a family member, your spouse, a significant other, or need to send messages at certain times, let's say for example you had a really bad night and you want to send a message that you're not going to make it in uh, to work because you're sick to your boss and you don't want to wake up to let them know but you want to send the text message at a specific time. What you do is you uh, where you would enter your message, you would tap the more option, and then you would choose a schedule message. Now this is a great function now. It's not available in all carriers. at t is one of the carriers that has it. But what you can do here is, let's say it's 2 o'clock in the morning, and you could set a message to go out at 9, or you can set a message, let's say you're in a different time zone, and you want to send a message to your family. You can set the day, the time, and then what you can do is choose done. And what will happen is, you'll see it here in the bottom, that the message is scheduled to go out this day at this time, and this would be your local time, to um, that recipient. And once you save it, it's just there waiting. And once this clock uh, ticks to this time and that day, the message goes out. Now this tip... Uh, is really good if you're a avid reader use your phone as if it was an ebook uh, reader and with this feature right here you notice that I have my screen timeout set to five minutes um, some people have the, uh, the the setting down to one minute to two minutes um, so what could happen is you're looking at a book reading a book and it takes you more than a minute to read and your screen locks smart stay if you enable that is going to allow the device to stay unlocked as long as it sees you. So the sensors that appear up here at the top are going to be monitoring that there's a face looking at it and it will not lock your phone. So this is a quick way to just control that, uh, that feature of turning off your phone without having to extend the time delay. Now this feature uh, is really designed for individuals who want the larger phone but don't want the complexity or all the features and functionality that comes from uh, an Android uh, ecosystem. You'll notice that there's a function here called Easy Mode. Oh, let me go back one. Easy Mode. Easy Mode is going to give you the ability to create a very simple interface. So if you're giving this to someone who comes from a flip phone uh, or someone who just doesn't want the complexity to say there's too much stuff going on, too many options, can you turn things off? Easy Mode is going to give you the ability to have this kind of experience where all you have is the time and then icons. There's not a lot of flexibility, um, but it gives you a simple view. And what you can determine is which applications will show up. And you notice it's very limited. This is for a person who's not into all the apps you know snapchat all those other things but you know they want to ha be able to listen to music take pictures and go on the internet so it simplifies the phone experience greatly by just choosing easy mode and just selecting that option now motions and gestures um, are uh, great features that not are, that are not really widely used so a couple things that you can enable and these all come enabled by default so this is just to make you aware of these features uh, direct call capabilities means that if you're looking at someone who sent you a text message and it's natural for you to hit the button and try to call them what you can do is just by taking the phone and putting it to your face when you're looking at that text message or that contact it's automatically going to call that person smart alert is a nice feature because smart alert if you have your phone on your desk um, or you know um, in your locker as soon as you pick up the phone it's going to vibrate if there have been any calls or any messages that you've missed. Uh, mute I like as well because if you are on the phone and you know there's a lot, strong noise or you just need to mute the person instead of trying to fumble and find the mute button all you do is face put the face of the phone down or cover the screen with your hand and it's going to mute the phone. And then the last one which I see a lot of people use is the uh, palm swipe to capture. So you can do a screen capture by pressing and holding the home button and the power button at the same time or what you can do is just swipe your hand across the screen um, as you see here in this illustration to capture a screenshot. Now this tip is all about organizing your wallet and getting ready for the experience that you would have with uh, Samsung Pay. Um, Google Wallet for a long time has had the ability to do tap and pay payments. Uh, but it also has a very functional and I think uh, convenient feature here that is called um, loyalty cards. So the neat thing about the loyalty card section is that you can take all those loyalty cards that you have and you can see I have several of them here that you can scan and add them to your phone and this will be on every device you have so if you have a Google let's say for example a um, 
uh, a tablet that is Android and you have Google Wallet installed, those cards are going to be there. Um, if you have a, let's say, an, another phone that you have, um, as long as you're logged into Google Wallet, these uh, loyalty cards will go with it. These loyalty cards will be backed up on the Google uh, Cloud, and when you get a new phone, they'll just come with it. And all you would do is once you've inputted uh, or scanned your card, when you tap it, the barcode, all the information is there, and you can actually go to the cashier or wherever you're checking out or checking in and just show your phone, and it's going to bring up um, all the appropriate information so that they can uh, scan your loyalty card. Really convenient feature. Um, just wanted to make sure that you guys were aware of it. Accessing uh, text messages can sometimes be pretty difficult depending on um, how good your eyesight is or depending on where you're at. So what you could do is when you're looking at a text message, if you use that pinch uh, command with your fingers, all you do is you can make things bigger by opening up or you can make things smaller by pinching close. So notice how small I can make something or what I could do is I can make it larger so that it's easier to read. So again, using the pinch, you'll be able to make the font larger or smaller for your text messages. Several releases ago, Samsung did away with the menu button. Uh, but there could be some apps that don't have a menu button. So how do you access the menu? So it's easily done. All you do is you press and hold the back button, and then the menu comes up. So before, you didn't have this function. So in order to get it, all you do is press and hold, and the menu will come up. Now this tip is all about battery consumption. Let's say you're in school and you know that when you're in the classroom or, or your college or high school, you run into a situation where signals really bad. So by the time you get out of school or by the time lunchtime comes around, your phone is dead. Or let's say you're in a work environment where there's not a really good signal um, and keeping your phone in your pocket or in your locker just kills the phone. Uh, there's a feature called Ultra Power Savings Mode and this uh, was released uh, some time ago. I think it was with the S5. You could probably go as far as the S4. And what it does is it gives you the ability to reduce um, all of the features and functions that are gobbling up your phone's battery. So what you could do is you can say, I want to go into this mode and watch what's going to happen. It's going to basically take the amount of battery that you have and increase it exponentially because it is reducing all of the background processes that are consuming your battery. So we're going to turn this on and let's see what happens to the phone. So you'll notice that it says it's turning on ultra power savings mode. And this is good if you're out at night, um, you're um, clubbing, and then your phone is dying, but you really don't want the phone to die completely. And you'll notice that what you have here is still the ability to make phone calls, the ability to go uh, make text messages, and still to go on the Internet. And you could add things to this as well. So, you know, maybe you can't survive without Facebook, so you can add Facebook to it. Uh, maybe you want to be able to have your calculator on the screen as well. So just a number of applications that could be low power consuming. The thing here is like it takes your battery life that you see there and it increases it. So now based on 91% battery, I can uh, operate without charging this phone up to 1.4 days. I've seen this down to 3 or 10% battery and it's increased the battery life for several hours based on the applications that are here. Now if you want to go back to your normal mode, all you do is uh, turn it off and it will go back into that normal mode. Let's say you make it to your car or you um, have a battery or a, uh, an area that you can plug in and you would just choose this to get back into your normal mode. So this is another battery saving tip. Let's say you don't want to go into ultra power savings mode but you still want to be able to extend the battery life of your phone. Uh, there's a couple things that you can do. If you go into accessibility uh, there is a setting here that you can actually change under vision that you can change the appearance of the screen. So a couple of things you can do. This is specifically to reduce um, the amount of battery your phone is consuming. I can change my phone into grayscale. And what grayscale is going to do is it's going to reduce all the colors, it's going to dull the screen, and it's going to make the screen last a lot longer. So now that I've chosen grayscale, uh, watch what my screens look like. So now everything is kind of like in a black and white, and because it's in black and white, it actually extends the battery life. So this is a way where if you want to keep all your features and functions, uh, you can actually choose that function and then it's going to extend your battery life. How much it will extend it? It varies because remember, you're still everything is still functioning, you just reduce the screen. Now, the screen happens to be one of the top, I would say, three to four apps uh, or functions that consume the most battery. So this is going to give you a nice kick when it comes to battery life. So this concludes our tips and tricks video uh, for the Samsung Galaxy Note 5. If you have any comments or questions or are looking for more tips, please leave it on the YouTube channel. Once again, don't forget to like, share, and subscribe, and thanks for watching.